Hi, Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the super simple fall color block hot pad. It's double thick, and I did each side different. Isn't that fun? Now, it measures about 9 by 9 inches, so it's a nice size and you can color coordinate it however you want to. You don't have to make it in fall colors like I did. I just wanted to because <laughs> of course we're still in fall. And so you can get in your yarn stash and come up with lots of different colors. I basically used four colors, chocolate brown, rust, this cream, and then on this side I used this taupey brown that's kind of a light beige. I love how it looks. I love how thick it is. And it's thick enough you can use this to pick up a hot pan or put a casserole dish on it from the oven. And so it's a great thing to make. It's also fun to make as gifts because it's a great way to use up your cotton yarn stash and make something pretty and useful. You might notice it has a little bit of a retro vibe to it. And that's kind of what I was going for. Sort of like a Brady Bunch era. <laughs> I grew up watching the Brady Bunch and I loved a lot of their colors. And that's kind of what I was going for in this fall color block hot pad. Now you can find the free crochet pattern as always on my blog and I'll put that link down in the notes underneath this video. To make our fall color block hot pad and pot holder, you're going to need to use 100% cotton yarns. Now I chose these colors because they're fallish, but you'll notice that my front of my hot pad is different than the back of my hot pad. It's stitched using the same technique. I just switched the colors up a little bit because I wanted four colors. Now. You can use as many colors as you would like. I have a sort of taupey beige. I have a cream. I have a chocolate brown and a rust. Okay, so the sugar and cream. I love this cotton. This is Walmart's cotton. And then this is Craft Smart cotton. So I'm using four different kinds of cotton, but it's okay because they're from my yarn stash, and all four of these are 100% cotton yarn. And I'm just telling you that because this is a good project to pull from your yarn stash. And you're going to need to make a front and a back. And then we're going to put the two together. And this makes a really nice, thick, hot pad so that you can use it to set a bread basket on or to pull some things out of the oven and not burn your hand. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook. That's a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in ends and you'll need a pair of scissors. Now, as far as the amount of yarn, your main color, you're gonna need approximately two ounces because remember, we're making a front and a back. And then your second color, you're gonna need about an ounce and a half and your third color, you're gonna need about an ounce, but those you know, are a little high for the amounts. Just get in your yarn stash and come up with some really fun colors. Because remember, you can make this to match your kitchen, you can make this as a gift to match somebody else's kitchen, and you don't have to use fall colors. Use whatever colors that you want to. We're going to begin with our main color. I'm using this sort of taupey brown for my main color. And we're going to make our slip knot and we're going to chain 30 chains. Now I do recommend that you chain this initial chain just a little bit loose. If you chain it too tightly, the bottom of your hot pad will be a little squished up and we want it to be a nice even square. All right, so we're loosely chaining 30 chains. I have chained 30 chains just a little bit loose and we're going to begin by stitching a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. 
One, two, three, four. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. Now this initial chain three here, that counts as our first, and we stitched a double crochet, and now we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of our chains across. One double crochet in each of our chains, working all the way across. I stitched one double crochet in each stitch across. We began in the fourth chain from the hook, and that initial chain three counts as our first. So we have 28 double crochets. We're going to chain three and turn. Now we're going to be doing some color changing on this row. We'll be doing it on every row until we get to the end. All right, and so I've got my, my next color here, this rusty orange, ready to go. So what we're going to do is our chain three counts is our first, so we're going to double crochet in the next two. One, two, and then we'll double crochet in the next one, but we'll finish it with our second color. All right, so we'll start our double crochet then we'll grab our next color and finish that double crochet with our new color. All right, let's get that out of the way. Now we're going to double crochet in the next four and we'll be changing back to color one on our last double crochet of the four. So there's our three. We'll stitch one more We'll start our double crochet and finish with the next color. Now we do it this way because it gives us a nice crisp look when we're changing colors. Also make sure that when you're doing your other color that you're stitching over the yarn across. We don't want it to hang in the back. We want you to stitch over it so it stays put. And to keep it from being seen a little, you need to give it just a little bit of a tug, not too hard, but you want it to look nice and neat. And so what we're doing on this row is we stitched four, we changed colors on that last one. We have four of our color two, changing colors on our last stitch. Now we went back to our color one and we're gonna repeat this across alternating four stitches of our two colors. So next we'll do the rust color. So let's continue our row across. So we changed colors in our last double crochet. Now I'm going to stitch four in the rust color. Again, changing colors in the last of the four. So to my fourth, I'm gonna give that just a little bit of a tug and change colors. So now I'm back to my taupey brown color, or taupey beige. One, two, three, four. Oops, don't finish it. I wanna give that just a little bit of a tug we don't want any of that drooping is why we give that a little bit of a tug. All right, and now I'm changing back to my rust and we'll do four stitches. One, two, three, whoops, <laughs> my yarn's chasing me. All right, we'll change to our taupey brown color and we'll go ahead and drop that rust one. We don't need it in the last four and we'll just stitch our last four stitches in this color one. There we go, our last stitch. And chain three. All right, let me get the yarn out of the way here. 
and we'll take us a look at it. All right, so row two, we have four in our color one, four in our color two, and then we alternate it across, and so we have four sets of four double crochets in color one, and three sets of double crochets in our color two. We still have 28 double crochets, we just changed some colors in there. And by doing our color changes the way that we did, we get nice crisp color changes. All right, and then we chained three. All right, for row three, we're basically just going to repeat row two. We've chained three, we're going to turn our work. We wanna make sure we get those strings out of the way there because we'll be going back and forth from our two colors. Our chain three counts as our first, so we'll double crochet in the next two. One, two, and then in the next one, we're going to change colors like we did before. So we'll grab up that color two, and now we're going to stitch four double crochets in our color two. And again, change colors on that last of the four double crochets. And then we'll just repeat this all the way across like we did on row two. I completed row three. We stitched it exactly like row two with one, two, three, four sets of four double crochets in color one and three sets of four double crochets in color two. Now this next row, row uh, four, we're going to be bringing in a third color, all right? And another thing I wanted to remind you is always when you're changing colors and you have an end like this, always bring it to the back of your work, all right? All right, so we chained three and we're going to turn our work. I've got my third color right here ready to go and we're going to do the first part the same. Our chain three counts as the first, so we're going to double crochet in the next two, and then again in the next one, and we're going to change colors, bring in our color two at the end. Some yarn out here, and again, be careful of twists, they happen. All right, so now we're going to double crochet in the next four stitches, There's our third one, and now we're going to do the fourth, and we're going to bring in that third color. We're leaving the other two, and we're bringing in color three. I guess I should finish the first part of that double crochet first. There we go. Now we'll bring in our color three. All righty. Now, we're going to be stitching over these two and stitching four double crochets with our color three. All right, so we'll go in the next stitch. We're stitching over both of those yarns, carrying them across. So there's one, two, three, Here's our fourth. We're going to change to our rust color. And now we're gonna stitch over these two. One, two, out of the way there. three, and here's our fourth. So now we're going to bring back in our color three. Let's start our double crochet there and finish with our color three. And I know this seems a little bit confusing, but you're still just stitching double crochets. You're just changing colors. 
And the color change is very important if you want a nice, crisp color change. And you'll notice I'm constantly pulling this down so we don't get twists in it because it's normal when you're using more than one color like that to get some twists. All right, let's take a quick look at this so you can see how that looks. We used a color three in here instead of our main color. All right, let's go ahead and finish this row. Got two more blocks to do of our color blocks. One. Two. Three and four. Now we're going to grab color one and stitch those last four double crochets. There we go. All right, we'll go ahead and chain three. Let's move our yarn out of the way there. So for row four, we have one and two of our main color. Then we have three sets of four of color two and two sets of four of our color three. Again, we're just stitching double crochets across. It's how we changed colors that makes this pot holder so unique. For row five, we're just going to repeat what we did for row four. So we've chained three, we're going to turn our work, and I do suggest you take a minute and untwist your yarns, or you'll get a little bit frustrated. And also remember to keep your yarn tails to the back of your work. All right, so we're going to start with those first double crochets. Our chain three counts as one. We'll stitch two more, and then another one. And on that last stitch, we're going to bring in our color two, snug it down. Now we're going to be stitching over both of these strands, okay? So you're gonna to need to go around there and go in that first double crochet. There's three and four. We're going to switch to our color three. Snug everything down so we don't have too much loopy space. All right, now we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next four with our color three. All right, so now we're going to bring our rust color back in. So we'll grab that rust one and finish off that fourth double crochet. And then stitch our four double crochets in our color two. All right, now we're going to our color three again. One, two, three, and four. And then again, we'll change to our color two. And you can see how we made our color blocks the same on this row. And we'll finish that off. So this is how row five should look from the back. You've got a couple of yarn tails here. We dropped our yarn. You wanna keep those to the back. All right, we chain three and now we're going to turn our work. And what we're going to do for the next two rows is repeat row two and row three so that it looks like these two rows. So we're going to repeat row two and row three. All 
The other thing you need to do at this point is cut uh, color three because we're going to have two rows and you don't want this trailed up that far. And so I go ahead and cut off color three and I work the next two rows and then the rows after that, I'll have those colors brought back in. All right, so we've cut off color three and we're going to repeat row two and row three. So I repeated row two and row three up here. And now what you're going to do is you're going to do a repeat of row four, row five, row six, and row seven. So you'll do two more rows like this and two more rows like this. So we repeated up here what we did down here on these two rows, and then we did another repeat like we did here of our row two and three. And that gives us a fun color block pattern. Now for this last row, all we're going to do is use our color one. So we've cut off our color two, and of course we've already cut off our color three. We've chained three, and so all we're going to do is stitch one double crochet in each of our double crochets across in our color one. No color changing on this last row. One double crochet in each of our double crochets across. I stitched that row of color one, one double crochet in each double crochet across. We're going to cut our yarn and tie off. And now we need to just take our needle. We have a few ends to weave in back here. And then we need to also do this with our second square and weave in our colors back here because remember, you need two squares. So my square has the last row on it. It's all tidied up. And remember, you're going to need two squares. This one I did a little bit different. I did the long lines in the cream instead of the rust. And then I added some dark brown here where I put cream here. And I'm going to trim it in the dark brown. All right, so we're gonna put the two together. We want the right sides facing out. Okay, and we'll just line everything up. And if you, when you put them together, you can already feel how nice and thick of a pot holder this is going to be. All right, now we'll grab our fourth color, which I'm using this chocolate brown, and we'll go right in that first stitch And we're just going to single crochet around the entire square of our two pot holders. All right, and so your stitches should be the same across the top, of course. And then we'll stitch together, and in the corner, we'll place three single crochets. All right, so I'm just going to stitch across the top, stitching single crochets, stitching the front and the back together with our right sides facing out. I've stitched across the top, stitching single crochets, stitching the front and back together with our right sides facing out. Now I'm to the corner, and in this corner, we're going to stitch three single crochets, and that's gonna help it move around this corner nice and neatly. Now, stitching down the side can be a little bit challenging because we don't have stitches to put our single crochets in. And so we're just going to evenly single crochet, trying to go in the stitches and not the holes. Now, there may be a spot where you have to go through a hole, but you really wanna try to go through the sides of the stitches for a nice, neat appearance. And so that may take you just a little bit longer than you were thinking, <laughs> but you really do want to try to get in the sides of those stitches for a nice, neat look. 
All right, and so we'll stitch on down to the corner. We'll put three single crochets in this corner, then we'll stitch across the bottom. We'll put three single crochets in this corner, stitch back up the side, and join to this first single crochet where we started. I stitched all the way around, stitching the front and the back together. Three single crochets in each of the four corners, and now I'm joining to that first single crochet. And before we cut our yarn, I'm going to make a hanger so you can hang it up. And it's really simple, you just chain 12, I'm going to turn this so that I can bring this back to this corner so that it's in a nice spot. And then we'll cut our yarn and tie that off. And so now you'll have a hanger so that it'll be within reach. Anytime you want to use it, you can just grab that loop. Okay. I do need to weave this in, but our color block fall hot pad is complete. Of course, I still need to weave that end in though. <laughs> so my fall color block hot pad and pot holder is complete. I just need to make another one so I have two, so that I have two that match. <laughs> I love how I made them different on each side though. I think that's super fun. Mm -hmm. 